The politics of species is an important um, concept to be thinking about. There's been a lot of work on thinking about ethics and human um, ethical obligations beyond the human. And I think that now thinking of it both in terms of maybe our moral responsibility but also our political engagement with the more than human world is part of what the politics of species really captures. So political engagement um, with the more than human world with animals and their habitats um, involves thinking about um, sort of the multiple structures, the ways in which um, various forces, forces of power and privilege, that's part of what politics uh, means in the broadest sense of the politics of species. So traditionally in thinking about the ethical obligations that we have to other animals, it's usually been based in our uh, considerations of their rights, for example, or whatever claims they might make on us. And my view is that we're already in relationships with all sorts of other beings, and we can make those relationships better or worse. And so we're entangled already in these relationships. Um, and so that's the entangled part. The empathy part is to bring more of our full emotional and effective and as well as our deliberative sides into thinking about how to make these relationships better. So it's not just about reasoning in an abstract way about what would be the right thing to do for this other animal. It's about recognizing that I'm, I'm connected to this other being and my actions have consequences for the well-being of this other being. And how do I want to be in relation to the other being? Yes, it's a different kind of empathy. So there's a, there's a number of different ways of understanding empathy. Um, there's a very um, sort of primitive empathy that we all have, which is just to respond to another's distress usually. It's usually distress. Um, and you've probably heard about, everybody's heard about um, yawning. So if one person yawns, another person, it actually happens with apes. If a, an ape yawns, another ape will yawn. That's a kind of what we call sort of emotional contagion. And some people think that's all there is to empathy. Um, other people have thought that empathy is about mirror neurons. You just sort of have this brain state that sort of mimics the brain state of another. My view is that empathy is a fairly complicated, entangled empathy is a fairly complicated um, process whereby you both have an effective um, engagement, you feel with the other, but you also have to deliberate because empathy can go wrong. Um, and sometimes to empathize is not always to empathize with the promotion of the well-being of the other. So if you think about just understanding, there's multiple there's multiple ways that empathy can go wrong. One way that empathy can go wrong is that you could have a really empathetic torturer who recognizes exactly what would cause you pain um, because he empathizes so well that he's able to be a good torturer. That's, that's bad empathy. It's, it's working, the empathy, but it's not what I would want to promote as the proper or good or appropriate kind of empathy. Another way that empathy can go wrong on the, on the other extreme is that you might over-empathize. You might think, you might see somebody who looks like they're in distress um, and become condescending. Um, and that can become another form of problematic empathy. So what entangled empathy is, is a way of trying to take those initial feelings that one has for uh, the needs and interests and well-being and flourishing of the others, and then try to um, figure out what's the most appropriate way to understand how and whether you can help the other achieve well-being. So I think that the, we start with this innate, um, if you will, or sort of native uh, connection to the emotions of others through emotional contagion. And I think what ends up happening is we turn it off. We, we learn how not to develop it. We think um, in our culture um, how not to connect with others. We're, we're often taught that, um, that we're sort of being um, too sensitive if we connect with others. And I think that that is, so early on, children are, are taught to sort of stop feeling so much for others. And I think if we allow that to develop and then hone it and, and um, refine it, we need to learn more about the conditions of others in order to um, empathize well. So we need to understand. And part of what the politics of species is doing is helping um, us to understand the various conditions that humans and non-human animals are living in so that we can learn more about how best to empathize with them. So 
there is a sense in which one of the dangers of um, entangled empathy and the danger in general of trying to extend our moral concern from the human center outward is that it becomes very um, centered on what we value. And the magnanimous embrace is a worrisome um, concept for me because what we're doing is simply um, from a position of on high, a position of privilege or a position of uh, esteem, including others, as opposed to recognizing those others as having their own way of living or being. Um, and I think I, I learned a lot about how to think about entangled empathy from work in critical race theory as well as also so other social justice movements. Um, movements for um, the rights of, of women, of GL, GBLT people, I think it's really important to um, recognize that people express themselves, their lives, their being, what makes them happy, um, who they want to spend time with, who they want to love, um, on their own terms. And we needn't assimilate into this sort of sameness way of being. And so when we magnanimously sort of from on high uh, allow others to be included or seen, um, that can have a dangerous side effect. Um, so I think one of the things that's really important is first to try to understand as best we can, and we're always limited, so this is, this is clear, we're always limited, but to try to understand how um, the lives of someone very different from ourselves, and that needn't be another animal, it could be another human, it could be someone from a different culture or a different religion, um, that how that individual makes meaning in their lives and makes meaning of their relationships. So one thing we need to do is learn more about others. And so that's sort of a sort of a first step. Um, but also to spend time with others and to recognize that they um, have their ways of doing things and to sort of see what it's like, uh, to put oneself in their position, to sort of understand what that position is like. And that's important, those are important steps for developing empathy. To spend more time in those cases, I, I was just speaking with someone earlier about, she, she's a, somebody who spends times with, time with whales. And of course you can't really spend that much time with whales because they live in an environment that's completely different than um, an environment we can spend much time in. But part of what we can do is we can spend time with those who have spent time with whales. Um, we can spend time learning about their sort of what we do know about them and what we can know about them. And it turns out in the case of um, the great apes, um, there are a number of individuals who have spent a good deal of time observing them in the wild and they've, they have a tremendous knowledge. And one of the things that's important is for us to learn from them. Not obviously, we don't want to all go out and try to independently create knowledge um, based on it would be interfering and dangerous. But I think that part of the idea is to learn from those who have spent time with, um, with other animals. Um, and so one of my, one of my um, worries about the magnanimous embrace um, and the strategy of extending personhood beyond the human, um, the strategy of, of trying to get great apes recognized uh, as a status similar to ours is that when we're focused on sameness we can overlook differences, important differences. And one of my concerns is to um, make sure that we're cautious and always recognize that there are both me methodological and conceptual concerns um, that we need to attend to. The methodological concern is that in order sometimes to understand um, whether or not a bonobo is as smart as we like to think, um, we end up doing things to the bonobo that's not conducive to that bonobo's well-being. Certainly with chimpanzees, much of the research that's been done to try to understand just what they know, um, how cognitively skilled they are, has involved a lot of trauma to those chimpanzees. And so sometimes we need to just recognize that observing them and understanding their behaviors, even if it can't be replicated in the laboratory, gives us enough information to understand their well-being. So methodologically, um, we need to be really cautious about assimilating other animals into our cognitive sphere because in order to get the evidence that's needed to include them often, the scientific evidence needed to include them, often we are going to subject them to treatment that right. we wouldn't be justified. It's important that I'm not opposed to using scientific knowledge and understanding um, as limiting as it can be to try to 
um, provide better uh, conditions and services for non-human animals, but I think it's important to be very cautious about that approach that they have to achieve a certain level and once they get that level then we can grant them this um, status because in order to get evidence that they've achieved this, achieved this level we often violate their interests in the process. That's what, I, that's, what I, that's what entangled empathy is trying to get away from. The granting of um, magnanimous embrace is about we bestow on you this status and I think that they can bestow on us a different understanding of ourselves and our place in the world. I've, well, I mean my work I do work in animal ethics I've been doing it for 25 years so of course I'm hopeful that we can make a difference I think that that's what motivates my work um, but I do sometimes worry that um, we might need different tactics and time is running out for a lot of wild creatures Chimpanzees, captive chimpanzees, are in an incredibly good position. Um, I would have, if, if you had asked me last year, or probably two years ago, um, w when, when will we shift our attitudes about captive chimpanzees, I would have said 15 years. And it happened within 15 months. And so um, I do think that that represents a really extraordinary change in understanding about the place of other animals in, in our world and um, our place in their world. So that, I think, is very hopeful, extraordinarily hopeful.